aspect of, of mentorship for us is firstly the fact that it has to be intentional, so it has to be a, 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 a really specific effort around the relationship we want with the boys. And the second one is that it must be long term. One of the one of the things we see so often is that we you know we, we do a function here or we do a camp there or we do a motivational talk um, and then we kind of expect that motivation to stay there. We know that in our own life it doesn't work there. Someone comes and it gets us all excited that you know three, four, five days down the line, you know, life has gotten to us again. And so then, then, then a lot of that tapers down. Um, studies have proven that between the ages of five and ten is when dad's impact would be the highest in, in, in the life of your children, especially for your son. It's a time when his identity is laid down. So between um, five and ten, I'm walking on the question, do I have what it takes? And um, that needs to be answered. Of course, if it's not answered in some way, then I grow up to think, well, I'm not sure if I've got what it takes. So where do I test those things? And that becomes a dangerous space because there's no one really around that is mentoring me through that. Um, so for us, that's important. Also, the fact that we cannot concentrate on short-term intervention. And even in our program, even you know, there's nothing that is a standalone. So you know, when we do a camp, I mean, think of BRIC, so, you know, camp would be a BRIC, events would be a BRIC, mentorship, you know, in all these sessions. And if you take all of those BRICs and you put them in a wall, you're building a structure. Then you have something solid. But if the BRICs are just lying around, it's rubble, um, and that's dangerous. And so, for us, it's a very, very specific intervention of how do we build this all in there. Um, and so, for us, it's long term. You cannot, in my own life, you know, growing up with an absent father, um, there were milestones throughout my life that I really wanted to share with him, that I needed input, that I needed advice, where I needed someone to just walk the road with me. We cannot go through a six-month course and then, you know, here's a certificate, you've done this. It just doesn't work that way. So we understood that we have to start young, it has to be intentional, and we have to have a plan around this. It's, and, the, and, the, and the plan is relationship. The plan is pitching up. Um, the plan is being there. Um, and, uh, and then it has to be long-term. So a boy that comes into our program at five, um, even though we just take boys in, in the intake between 5 and 10, um, once a boy comes into the program as a, or as a bonsai, then he'll be a junior and he'll be a senior. And through our seniors, they'll, you know, we, we start identifying um, boys that's gone through our Pass Through Fire program and, and they, uh, they get to you know, have some additional input um, where servant leadership is really taught. And they come back as junior mentors. So through the whole process, we're also trying the program to fall back on itself that we, that we can pay it forward. And, and that's ideal. So, you know, we've got boys in, like, in the senior stage right now. I'm looking forward to getting them to be able to come and give that input later on. But it remains a long, long term process. Once you're part of the family, you know, you really, you know, the, the, the ideas that you stay. And also for the mentors in the program, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a brotherhood that's formed there because a lot of us have not been mentored. A lot of us have had absent fathers or no positive, no role models. And so for us, this is all new. And we're in a space and we understand that. that we're in a comfortable space. We, we, we're, not, you know, we're not in a space where we talk about politics and his common you know, traffic. We're in a space where we talk about real things. If you're not uncomfortable in a good way in a leadership relationship, then you have to ask yourself, you know, what am I doing? Um, am I being asked the questions that he's really touching me and um, that he's confronting me to open up and bold myself? Am I being um, held accountable for stuff? And so for us, those are important things but they're long-term things, and so, so we work very, very hard to build those structures. And uh, you touched on it, the, the personal cost, because you talk about a relationship, I mean, and I'm just wondering about the personal cost to a person who has to mentor somebody, because you, you talk about accountability, you talk about a relationship. I'm just wondering then, what does it take for somebody to say, I want to be a mentor, I want to step into your life, and not just like for five minutes for an event. Mm -hmm. What does a person really have to co reconcile with themselves for them to be able to raise a boy uh, into a good man? Yeah. I mean, that's an interesting question because, you know, when we, when we think of the personal cost, we immediately think of what I have to give. Yeah. And in many ways, I receive a whole lot more than I give. I mean, I, you know, my life has been enriched through mentorship in ways that I can't even begin to describe. But the personal cost starts with a vulnerability. It starts with, uh, okay, um, I, I don't know how to do this. And that means that I have to learn something bigger than myself. I have to, I have to step out of my own way. For us, it means um, you know, surrendering. It means uh, you know, being completely vulnerable. For, for me personally, that's a faith issue. It's like, am I prepared to trust God that if I stand in front of a group of five-year-olds, that he would do the work and not me, that I would not get in the way of that? And I think 
considering that we are essentially using a broken generation to heal a broken generation, um, we, we start with you know, a, a real, real introspection on this uh, from mentorship. And that's why we're struggling to find mentors. That's why it's so hard for me to make that commitment. You know, we, we always say we're looking for fat men, faithful, available, teachable. Um, and I, I think often the available part already is hard. It's like, oh, I'm so busy. I'm, my time, and, you know, and that's actually just a simple excuse. I mean, in, in the reality is that you should, you should swing the question around or the statement around just saying, well, it's not that I'm too busy. It's just like, this is just not a priority to me right now. And, and that's the reality. So because we, if we are too busy to build community and build legacy, then we shouldn't be too busy to complain about the state of our country and the state of our communities. So we seem to do that quite well. Um, and in the teachable part, you know, you know, that is the hard part because, and I would say that's where the cross comes from. It's like, a, I want to do this, I don't know how to do this, but there will be many in my life that will support me. There will be a curriculum. So you know, as the excuses get chipped away, I come to face to face with the reality that I'm going to be confronted with stuff that I don't want to address in my life. I've, I've, I'm in an uncomfortable comfort zone where I'm, you know, it's just okay. And when I was 11, I had to figure out I'm going to have to do this on my own. I've got you know, life is up to me. And I became comfortable with that. Now I'm in a space where other men get in my life and they are asking very pointed questions about accountability and where's my life going? Because I cannot give what I don't have. Um, so if I'm not receiving mentorship, how do I give mentorship? Um, and so in our, in our program, it's uh, every mentor must have a mentor. That's the culture we build. Um, but it, it does require us to get to a space where we are prepared to be vulnerable. And, and I think one of the things I'm also saying to, um, to our mentors all the time is, um, you know, I, I don't believe in, in, in constructive criticism. Um, if, if, if I've made the effort to be part of your life, then the input I'm giving you is invested. I'm investing in your life. Um, some of it is going to be great, you know, you've done well, but some of it's going to be like, what are you doing with this? I mean, where is this fitting into your value system? And that's, that's going to be harder. We don't like that. We don't want to know that we, you know, those are blind spots. We don't want to be made aware of them. But it's not criticism. And I think if someone comes into your life and they're saying, you know, when they point out stuff and you do not have a relationship with them and they've not made the effort, then, then, then it's criticism. And then we should actually just go like, I'm sorry, but if you're not prepared to invest in my life, then I'm actually not interested in what you've got to say because what, why are you doing this? So I'm constantly having to invite people into my space. I have to assess that. I have to be okay to get hurt in the process. Sometimes I get hurt because I've made the wrong decisions and, and people come with different agendas, but sometimes I get hurt because I have to open up. You know, there's things I've buried so deep, I have to like, okay, this is, this is hurting, this is, I have to get it out there, and I didn't want to, it was, it was okay when it was hidden down there. And so, I think that's where the personal cost comes in. The amazing thing is when I realize that in my head I'm thinking of the cost, and, but once I get through that, I, mean, I just love a culture of mentorship. I love to be in conversations where I get to grow, because what else? I mean, what's the alternative? I, mean, I wouldn't want to be stagnant as a person. Um, and yet we are, okay, I think we, we very much are quite okay to you. Don't talk to me, I'd rather lie on the couch and you know, watch a sports game or something. <laughs> don't want to work on myself. Um, but I think I would say that that's the cost. The, the other cost are not really, that, that would be maybe giving some of my time, sometimes a little bit of resources here and there. The, 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 the big thing is giving off you. I think, you know, if you, you can talk about a lot of the smaller hurts, let's talk about, you know, following that essentially it comes down to one big thing and that is that I don't know that I've got what it takes because no one's really answered that question so it's, 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 a, it's a question I walk around with the whole time and when I'm, when I'm looking at other people to answer that question I get hurt um, when, when, if, if my identity is not settled it, it, it becomes an identity issue so where does my identity lie? does my identity lie with being a husband, with my wife um, in a relationship, at work um, I mean, right now, if, if my identity is lying in any of those things, I mean, we, we are living in crazy times. I mean, what happens to that? That source that gets pulled out is like, suddenly, you know, I might lose my job. Suddenly, my income is affected. And if that's my identity, then, then it shakes. Uh, often, I've had conversations with men, and they uh, are unemployed. And the, the wife is, is working, and for them, they just feel like they're not a man because they don't bring him back, you know, they don't bring him a salary home. And so for them, the identity was linked to you know, I must provide. Um, you know, the word provision is actually, the biggest part of that word is vision. You know, and so we're thinking the, the money is it, and it's not that. And so I think 
the, the, the more my identity is, is, is unsure within myself, the harder this is going to be. And the more I'm just going to try and cover it. It's the, it's the mask I'm going to wear. It's like, you know, I do have what it takes, I think. I'm not actually sure, but how do I find that out? And I don't want to test it. Because what if, in my interaction with you, I may be confronted with the fact that I don't have what it takes? What then? And if that's my whole identity, then what do I do with that? Who am I? And so I think, um, you know, in South Africa, you know, one of the things we're struggling with is masculinity. What does it mean? And it comes down to, is, I, I don't know who I am. Um, you know, if, if I can be secured in that, it means that in a relationship, I understand that I, am, I have a role to play, but my question cannot be answered by you. You cannot answer, you know, the question, is, do I have what it takes? Because that comes from here. If I understand my identity and that is secure, then I know. Um, and, and that helps me. And so I think those wounds, we've spent so much time trying to cover them up and you know, trying to pretend they're not there. And so we've become experts at that. You're building the walls, you know, keeping the masks up. And, and what I'm being asked in a mentorship space is to take that stuff down. And that, I just, it, you know, that, that's such a vulnerable space for a man. And we, we, <laughs> I think we come to a space where we actually believe that we've got some stuff under control. Um, which we don't. I mean, they, we've got just control of nothing. Um, but we think, like, you know, I can, I have my, I've got my job under control and we don't work, you know, I know what I'm doing. At home, I have to be a husband and a dad, and I've got no clue. So, you know, that's maybe why men spend so much time at work and so little time at home, because we are scared of it. What if in that space I get the answer to the question? And the answer is going to come from all kinds of places that is untrue. And so it's just going to reinforce that. And so for me, I really believe that if we can settle identity, which is a hard thing, you know, we cannot do this alone. You know, if I knew how to do this alone, I would have struggled through about 40 years of you know, trying to figure these things out. I would, have, I would have, at seven years old, understood that I need someone to answer this question, I need my identity settled. As a, as a kid, I would have gone out there and like, you know, put an ad in the newspaper or you know, go to the men in the street and like, you know, you are, you're supposed to do this for me. If I knew that was what I needed, but I don't. And so having to try and identify this already is difficult because we don't spend time in spaces where that is the issue. We don't spend time typically in spaces where other men will confront that for us and say, okay, but do we, you know, the stuff that you're dealing with, where does it come from? Um, you know, don't, don't tell me the, um, you know, the superficial stuff that you're dealing with here. Tell, tell me really what the root of is. What is the root cause? It's like what an organization, we're dealing with the root cause here, changing the behavior of boys. We're not dealing with, you know, being great counselors. I mean, we, we want to stop this before it happens. And so I think the mentorship space for me has, has meant that I had to come to a place where I grew up in a way. I had to find some level of maturity. Um, I remember that there was a time where I was really, you know, I, we call each other uncle in the character company. So, you know, that's, that's fine. But, you know, when, when you walk into a shop and there's a young person behind the counter and they go uncle or woman in Afrikaans, it's like my first reaction was like, you know, who's your uncle? I'm not that old. And then I look at my reflection, I'm looking at grey hair, and I'm thinking, but you actually, you know, you're 50 is a lot closer than you think. And then in my mind, I realized that I'm stuck somewhere as, as a little kid. And the moment I could make that connection, I could actually, um, in a way, invite that kid over to a, to, a, to a different space. And for me, what that meant is that I could start dealing with, um, or getting onto a journey, and a journey that's filled with with other, other men that are, are walking the same path or that's been further down the journey a bit and can pull me along and say, we're still trying to figure this out too, but we're going to walk this together. And it, it helped me to understand that if I can start settling those things, um, you know, it, it builds maturity, it builds identity, um, it just settles so many things that I've been struggling with. And I think for me that's the key to ultimately what it comes back to mentorship, is having someone that's just going to walk this road with you and help you to figure it out. I'm checking our time. Okay, five minutes. Um, the, the second part of the question was, as you mentor, you know, we say when you, when you parent, your kids parent you. Yes. You know, um, so what I want to ask is, do you do this work for all these years? What, have, what has it done for you? And in fact, your, your own family, um, as you are with other boys and, you know, and I, I, you've, got, you've got sons? Daughters. Daughters. Yeah. yeah, so what has that done for you in terms of as you work with boys and have, have you noticed any change or addition to, to your own personal life? Oh, for sure. And I think some of it's like, you know, it will be obvious. You know, you, you can tick them off easier. When, when, you, when you start thinking about it, then you start realizing there's a lot of deeper stuff that have changed. I always say to guys, when you get involved in this, you're going to become a better husband. 
a better dad, better member of society, you'll be a better employer, employee. And, and the big part of that is that is our, is our value system. So if I spend my time every week uh, mentoring young boys about the value system, it means that they, it just gets reinforced with me all the time. So when I suddenly get on the road, I can suddenly start looking, okay, kindness. How can I practice kindness on the road? How can I, how can I do this? Um, and so, I mean, so, some of those are very, very easy to identify. I think some of the other things is that I've received so much more um, from this than, I, than I've ever given. And I, I think I've said that before. And a lot of it's also because, you know, uh, I personally love camping with my bonds after to five, six, or seven hours. There's a refreshing energy, there's a refreshing honesty, there's a, um, you know, there's a belief that we can change the world. And so I just feel I have to uh, try and keep up with that the whole time. But it's also um, your, your, what you're giving gets mirrored back to you. And so um, in that space, if you're teachable, which is a requirement of, of being a mentor, would, be, would mean that you would also be able to give the input back. Um, you, you cannot talk about table manners to the boys at camp when you are talking with your with food in your mouth. Um, you, you cannot tell them about you know, self-discipline and then you're on your phone and you them up in the car without your hands free, or you are you know, losing your temper when you're dealing with um, guys on the road. Um, and it's part of what we tell our boys, you know, when you're in the car with Uncle so-and-so, you know, you must, you must also keep him accountable. Um, for, for me, it, and it's hard because, you know, you get those times where, you, where it's just like everything is just going wrong and you just want to, and now you've got, because I told my daughters that they must keep me accountable and they go from behind the plug, you know, I, mm. watch this or you shouldn't talk on your phone or, and you go, man, you know, it's like you actually want to go like, I'm the dad, be quiet. But you, I've, I've invited them into that space, I've invited them to do that. And it helps us to be confronted the whole time about that stuff. And so I think, again, it, it just it strips away the layers slowly, slowly. And it just, it, it takes us to that space where we learn to just walk through life slower. Because I've got people watching me. And I'm accountable um, for other people. And sometimes it's just, how do I deal with a situation? In a crisis situation, how do I deal with it? Because our kids will remember that. My kids will not remember the crisis for what it was, they'll remember it for the way I reacted. And I think it's one of the, one of the challenges, because I think again, as a dad, that's what a, a big part of our responsibility to bring into, into the family space. And when, you ta when the dad's not there, now we're also expecting mom, who's you know, already wired to be more caring and more, you know, like, I need to check out for everything. Um, now we're also asking her to bring the, 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 the calmness to that. And that's, I think, sometimes very unfair. You know, those, those roles, we can't have two very opposing roles that, that builds a whole to be carried by one, one person. It, it doesn't work that way. And so I think for me, what was so refreshing about this is, again, it's, it's, the, it's the hard spaces. It's the, I want to be accountable to my kids. I want to be accountable to the boys in the program. I want to live a life because I can tell them a million things and they won't listen. Um, but if I show them through my behavior, then, then they, will, they, will, they want to mirror that. They, when, we, when we're in spaces where, where men are behaving better, um, we want to be that. There's something in us that pulls us to go, like, I really want to be more of that. How do I become more of that? But um, when we're in a space where we're just told what to do the whole time, I think we get very resistant to it. Um, last question. Um, if you were to describe to um, young men, then, if somebody came to you and said, but what, is a, what is a good man in you? You, you want to see boys becoming good men. What is that? Because there aren't a lot of people talking about that picture. You know. So what, what's a good man? I think a good man is, is the same as when you, you talk about masculinity. You've got five guys in the room, you're going to have six different opinions about that. Um, so it's, it's often something that we look at. So for us, a good man will be faithful, available and teachable. I think that, that, that's the clearest thing. It is someone that's going to be faithful in what he does, understand that there's way, way bigger things in this universe than just ourselves. We need to get it out of our, out of our own spaces. And for me personally, it believes that, that, they, that, there's, that, I, that I'm a son. You know, I'm a son of the Most High God. I mean, that for me, and, and that just helped me with my identity. You know? so, so that part, the available part is that I, I cannot live this life for myself. And I have responsibility. I've, I've, I wasn't placed on this planet to be self-absorbing and selfish and sort of me, me, me. I was placed with a vision and a mission and a purpose. And then teachable is, I have to be open to input in my life. I'm, I, I'm, 
I'm not built as an island. I'm not wired for, for being isolated. Um, I'm, I'm wired for growth and for involving people in my life and I, and I need to do that. That's, that's ultimately where I, where I grow. And, um, and I need the tools to do that. I need, I need a way, I need a roadmap. And for, you know, for me, that's the value system. If you can, if you, we cannot change behavior if we don't change the heart. You can't change this from the outside. Um, I can't say, well, I need your behavior to change. Here's a value system. And now I'm hoping um, that your heart will change. I mean, the chances are very, very small. But if I change your heart and I give you a value system, then your behavior will change. Um, and so I think for, for us it comes down to that. And it's, it's the vulnerability that comes in, in a teachable space again, um, that, I'm, that I don't know at all. I'm not going to walk out there pretending that, I, that I've got it all figured out. That I, I understand that I need people in my life to help me answer the questions that I'm struggling with. And that I'm walking this road in community. I'm building community. I'm not building you know, an inheritance or building a career. Um, I'm essentially, my first focus is building community. And if we can change that mindset, if I, if, if I can live out there with a value system, and I'm vulnerable, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm teachable, and, I'm, and I've got the right focus because my heart's been changed, and, and, I, and I, want, I want different things than just the, for me, I mean, just I, I, I think of that picture of what our country could be like, and I just like it's like wow. Can you? I mean, just imagine, and um, when we, when we do that, and so far I said it'll be a good man.